hope those are not just words, but that God is your all and all. Not just while the sun is shining, but also when dark days come or when friends turn their back on you that you learn to look to the hills from which cometh your help understanding that all your help comes from the Lord I've been doing this now for over 50 years and every time I get tired and say I've had enough he just seems to give me a little more strength to run on and see what the end going to be. Some people started with the Lord and stopped. Some other people, because you stumbled and fell, you just laid there and wallowed in self-pity. But me, I've stumbled and fallen more times than I want to admit to. But I kept getting back up again. I kept trusting in the Lord anyway because I know he is a way maker. I wish I had some witnesses in here. He's a burden bearer. Uh, he's a friend for the friendless. When you're lonely, he'll comfort you. I'm a living witness to those of you who are joining us by the internet and those of you who are here with us now. I would that you would stop feeling so guilty Get back up on your feet and give God some of your praise. You'd be surprised what God can do for you and will do if you just turn around and try it again. For those of you who were not here with us this morning, I came out of the 20th chapter of the Gospel of uh, St. John, and uh, I went down a few verses, but I need to stay in that book if it's all right with you and you'll go with me to the 17th verse and it says Jesus saith unto her touch me not for I am not yet ascended to my father but go to my brethren and say unto them I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Let, let me leap down to verse 20. It says, And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. I want to talk to you from this subject, evidence. It's just one word. It shouldn't be hard to remember. Don't have to write it down. But if you need to, go ahead. Evidence. There are a lot of people who will only believe in you when you show them evidence. When, when you go to court, you don't ever want them to have, how shall I say, evidence against you. If, when they have evidence to prove what they are accusing you of, you do know at that point that you can be found guilty. But I wonder how many of us tell people that we are Christians, but there's no evidence. That's where I want to go. No evidence. The scene opens on this particular resurrection morning with the writer John talking about the death of Jesus the Christ. Lucifer has spent his entirety since he got kicked out of glory trying to make you believe that there is no evidence that Jesus is the Son of God. There are those of you who still have issues. I mean, you got your doubts. You, you want to believe and you, you try to believe, but it's kind of hard to believe in what you can't see. 
There are many who started the race and somewhere along the journey stopped. And you stopped because somebody else stopped. You stopped because somebody you believed in stumbled. And not only did they stumble, but they fell. Doesn't matter that they fell and they got back up, they fell. You discovered that your friend, your relative, uh, your neighbor, your cohorts, that they are not perfect and your faith in God was based upon their commitment to God. But the, when they fail and stumble, when they wound up in the same situation that you're wrestling with, all of a sudden you lose hope in whom Jesus is. There are many people, many, there are preachers, that have started preaching and stopped because they believe, but all of a sudden they discovered that somebody else wasn't perfect. And because they discovered that that other person was not perfect, they lost faith in God. I I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but, but there are people in your family that claim they love the Lord, but cuss like sailors. There are people in your family they like to sleep around. There are people in your family tree that do any and everything, but go to church every Sunday. Shake the preacher's hand, tell him how much they love him, and then talk about him like a dog when they get home. And it causes you to wonder if they claim to know Lord but act like you, then do they really know him? The scene opens. Their funeral has taken place. The acclaimer is dead. He told the people, I am the son of God. And before I got to seminary, I had issues with that until I discovered something. That uh, not only did Jesus acclaim his relationship to God, but there had been some other fakers who had come along from generation to generation trying to make people believe that they were the Son of God. There's always imitators. There's always, matter of fact, me and myself, I used to want to be B.B. King. I, I could lean back like him. But I couldn't play a guitar if somebody said my life depended on it. And so nobody believed me when I acclaimed that I knew B.B. King. It could have been, wake him up, he's asleep over there. It could have been that uh, somebody had made it up in their mind that I wasn't really who I said I was. And you know what? They were telling the truth. I was just faking it to make it. There was a girl I was trying to impress. Let's don't tell that part of the story. But uh, I was trying to make it up to make, get her impressed with me. But I discovered something that if you're not impressed with you, nobody else will be. You, you got to be who you really are. Don't, don't try to fake it till you make it. I'm starting to talk about somebody, aren't I? I? I don't mean to throw rocks at your house. But I want you to understand that you're not the only one trying to pretend who you are. You know how you say, I'll go all the way with the Lord till the storm comes. You know how you, you'll say, I'm with the Lord. I don't care which way the wind blow until the storm comes. Have you ever asked God for something and, and you waited and you waited and you waited and you waited and it didn't come and you lost hope in God because he didn't answer your prayer? But maybe you didn't figure it out that sometimes he don't give you what you want because it'll mess you up. He, he, he doesn't give you what you're asking for because it'll slap you down. Uh, aren't you glad, don't raise your hand because the people I'm talking about might be in here, but aren't you glad that the person that you thought you wanted, that you wanted to be, that you were boo-boo the fool about, and aren't you glad that now that you know who they are, mm -mm, thank you, Lord, you didn't let me go that route. Am I the only one in here been down that road? Listen, I've had two or three driving accidents because I was trying to get with a certain person and I saw what she wanted me to see. Am I the only one in the house? 
Is it anybody else been down that road? But, but when I got to know her, I thank God that he didn't let me go down that road. I mean, not that she was all that bad or I was all that good, but where she was going, I didn't want to go. Because I made up in my mind, I need evidence. And, and what I've discovered, that all evidence is not always against you. Some of it's in your favor. The woman went running to the gravesite the next morning after Jesus had been crucified and buried. Now, I doubt that there are many of you that have ever gone to the gravesite after they buried somebody on the very next day. But she loved him. She, she loved him more than she loved herself. Because during that era, it was trouble for you to even call his name to let alone love him. And she followed him all the way to the grave. Now, I got problems because the story says that there was a great stone rolled in front of the entrance of the place where they laid him. As a matter of fact, the stone was so big that a woman couldn't have moved it by herself. So no doubt she went in great dilemma, but her purpose was, I just need to see him. One more time. I need to meet up with my Savior. I, I know that they crucified him on the cross. I, I was standing there when they did what they did. I, I was there when they pierced him in the side. I, I know he's dead, but he's not dead to me. H have you ever loved somebody so much that when they die, you, you still can't let them go? Okay, that was two, uh-huh. That's all, just, and it's right over there. Now, ain't none of y'all been down that road, but just keep living. Maybe you'll run across him or her, but, but you can love somebody so much that even in the grave, you still love them. You can love your children like that. You can love your wife or your husband like that. You, you can love mama like that. And add daddy in there too. But, but isn't it strange how some people can love you while you're up? but they don't know you when you're down. Yeah, I mean, you, you don't know where I'm going with that, do you? Because I've had some friends that they loved me as long as I had money in my pocket. And the moment my money was gone, the honey was gone. Oh, shut up. Uh, but I was glad to know that the Lord loved me whether I got it or not. I was glad to know that this woman loved him so much that the very next day after the funeral, she went to the grave. I, I, I'm still trying to figure out, Deacon Mac, what it was that she wanted to say to him. What, what could she have wanted to say she didn't say while he was living? What, what did she want to do that she didn't do? Maybe, well, it couldn't have been the woman that she washed his feet with her tears and dried it with her hands. Couldn't Because she did all humble as she could do. It, it just couldn't have been the sisters who had him come over to the house and fed him when he was in town. They, surely it wasn't none of them. Who is the woman that wants to go to the grave after he's dead? Was it somebody who believed that he going to get up? I mean, have you ever believed so hard that you didn't care what nobody else said? You need to see for yourself. I get upset when people don't go, don't things don't go their way. They, 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 they want to believe, but, mm, you know, that, that's hearsay. And maybe the Lord said, I know somebody going to say hearsay. So he said, I tell you what, baby, you, you get up in the morning and you go to the grave. I, I got something for you. And I, can you imagine her walking to the gravesite, Michelle? And she says, I, I know I can't roll a stone away, but I just need to go. She gets to the grave and, and all of a sudden she sees the stone roll away. Can, can you see the jubilant in her heart and saying, well, there's one block moved out of my way. <laughs> I ain't got to roll a stone away. Sometimes you got stones in your life that need to be moved, but you can't move them. The Lord has to move them for you. I, don't raise your hand because I don't want nobody in your business, but is it anybody in here ever been in a relationship and you just wish they'd leave? I, I'm not going to look. I wouldn't dare raise my hand. 
that I've been down that road that because the more I was with that person, the more agony they projected in my life. And I had to finally wake up one day and realize you don't mean me no good. And I know you see me stand in this relationship because every time you go to arguing because ain't no money in the house and arguing because I couldn't buy you no new car, arguing because didn't nobody give you any money for my anniversary, I, I ain't got time for that. I don't need Satan in the house. I'm wrestling enough with Satan outside the house. I don't need him in the house. And so she goes and she, she noticed the stone is rolled away. I, I, I'm happy the stone rolled away. That, that's a witness right there. Now, the evidence is that he did die, but she's a witness that uh, he didn't just stay there. She goes into the grave site. Now, maybe I need to give you some explanation because here we dig the ground and put them in and cover them up. But there, they opened the cage, stuck him in there, and then rolled a the stone back in there. There wasn't no dirt involved. It was all concrete. Or better, shall I say, stone. And after getting down, she, she looks and she sees a man that, well, that, that can't be him. Hmm. Mister, I, I know you're the groundkeeper, but could you just show me where you laid him? I, I know he's dead. I, I don't, you ain't got to explain that to me. I know he's dead, but just show me. See, you don't understand what he meant to me. I, I can't say what he means to you. And, and some of y'all, you them sometimes worshipers, Easter, Christmas, and Thanksgiving. But me, it's, it's every Sunday and every Monday and every Tuesday and every other day of the week. You see, he's done too much for me just to see, go see him three times a year. I, I need to talk with him at night when I'm by myself. I, I need to talk to him when my money's funny. I need to talk to him when my friends are few. I, I need to talk to him when I ain't got no friends. I, I, oh, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go down. I, I got carried away. I'm sorry. But I need somebody who can be there when there's not even there. And as I'm sitting around, I'm, I'm waiting. I don't need Jesus to prove himself. He's already done that for me. But she didn't go to get proof. She went to go get some evidence. She got there and she discovered the stone rolled away, but there's a man in there. I don't know who he is that tells me that after I die, you, my own mama might not recognize me because I won't look like I look now. I got another house, not made by hand. Y'all see where I'm going with that? And since I got evidence because I got a relationship with him, I've stumbled, I've fallen, but he keeps picking me back up. And that's where y'all keep making mistakes. You think because you stumble and fall and went right back to where you used to be that you apparently you haven't made a real relationship. But I'm, I got news for you. He said I could fall seven times, but every time he'll pick me back up. And, and he won't just do it for me. He'll do it for you too if you trust him. He'll pick you up, dust you off, and take go on, baby. You got it. Because I'm glad that he doesn't hold everything I say and do against me. He lets me apologize and beg for forgiveness. And he wipes my slate clean over and over and over and over. Matter of fact, I asked him how many times. He said, shut up. Over and over. He just keep on loving me even when I can't stand me. He loveth me. The woman says, show me. Where you laid him. If I could, I'd show you where they laid him. But I've never been to Israel. I've always wanted to go, but I've not been there. But I don't need to go to show, for them to show me where they laid him. Because he's not there. I, I need to show me where you had laid him and he got up. And he got up with all power. And I've been trying to wrestle with that. Because if he and the father are one... That means that he got power and the father got power, but that ain't what he said. He said, I got all power in heaven and in earth, in my hand. And what he's telling me, the very same hand that they drove the nails through and, and it left an imprint in them, but in his hand, he's got power over Trump. Shut up. He's got power over Putin. Shut up. He's got power over North Korea. All the people, matter of fact, he got power over you. You know how you don't like white folks? Go ahead, I'll wait.
for you listening on TV, I, I want you to know they pissed right now at this. I told them you, you don't like white folks. You don't like Latinos. You don't like the Jews. You don't like anybody, including yourself. But you believe the Lord loves you. Well, how come he can love you, but you can't love nobody else? You let other people determine who you like and who you love. But when you walk up on me with your hate, I ain't got time for you. Because I can't hate you and love him. I'm going to have to love him and love you. Because some people will love you as long as you give them what they want. Some other people love you as long as you got something they can take. And then there are some other people, they love you as long as they can work their way around you. And then there are some people, all, they love you because they're trying to figure out how to get their hands in your pockets. Ask me how I know. Because as long as I had money, I had friends. But the minute I got broke, I had nobody. But I discovered something. Whether I had money for the offering, no money for the offering, God still loveth me. Whether I stumble and fall or never claim to my imperfection, he still loveth me. When the woman turned around and said she didn't recognize him, that tells me that she didn't have a relationship. She just heard of him. She really loved him, but not the way she ought to. And she said, just show me where you laid him. But if he had shown her, she couldn't get him out if he was in another location. It is strange how we ask God for some strange things. You want a house, but you couldn't pay the electric bill. You want a mansion, but you ain't going to keep it clean. You want one of them great big freezers, and you don't keep food in your little refrigerator now. Be careful what you ask the Lord for. Because he knows you, if you have more, you're going to mess up more. Sometimes you ought to just thank the Lord for what you do have. You, you ought to say, Lord, I, I thank you for what I got. I, I heard my grandmother, Michelle, she said over and over, Lord, I thank you for my three board porch. Now, it, it was a porch that went all the way across the front of the house. And I get what, what is a three-board porch? Well, she was talking about three different pieces of wood. But the, but the porch was a lot longer. In other words, thank you for what I got. But what I got, you gave it to me. And they didn't used to be claiming that I want more than I can afford. I, I got two-bedroom house, got a bathroom, a kitchen, even got a sitting room. Y'all call them living room, but they call them back then sitting rooms. And, and she thanked God every day for what she had. And she made sure she thanked him because she made me cut the yard. I'm thinking, I ain't thought th thanking him for nothing. I'm tired of sweating out him. And she would say, boy, just keep living. You'll understand better by and by. When Jesus spoke to her, go home and read it in that 20th chapter, she became infatuated. She recognized the voice. She knew who he was. Because if you know the Lord, at least when you hear him, you ought to be able to recognize who's talking to you. Now, if somebody tell you to go blow somebody's brains out, that ain't the Lord. If somebody tell you to beat up the woman to just fix your food, that's stupid. Do you think I'm going to cuss that woman out who fix my food, serve it on the table, and I'm going to cuss her? Now, that's stupid. Why would I get mad with God after he let it rain? It's his world. Go ahead, rain. I don't care. But you got to walk in it. Fine. He, he washing my hair. Oh, no, I know. He washing my bald head. But at least he let me walk in his rain. Y'all didn't get that. I'm so glad that the Lord takes care of me. I don't know what to do. I don't have time to question him. That's why he let the rain fall on y'all, but won't let it fall on you. I don't have time to question the Lord why you got a job and I don't have one. I really don't be, want to be worried about it. Why y'all going to heaven and I'm still trying to get there. In other words, instead of me being worried about what the Lord doing for you, I ought to thank the Lord for what the Lord is doing for me because he wakes me up in the morning, starts me on my way, 
And when I turned to the right, and he said, I told you to turn left. Excuse me, reverse, turn back, go this way. Why? Because he knows what's down the road that way. And they don't use me going down it anyway after he told me to go left. But some of y'all kind of hard-headed. You're going to do what you want to do. I'm grown. You can't tell me. Okay, go ahead, Slit. Tell the Lord what you're going to do and suffer the consequences. Zine says, he tells her, I'm, I'm going to let you go because I know you ain't going to know where to go, but I'm going to let you go. He says, go tell the brethren. Now, see, right there, she could have got an attitude. I'm the only one here that came to your grave, and you're going to tell me to go tell the brethren that you've seen me. You know how y'all get sometimes, you, 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 you get mad because God blessed them, but he didn't bless you that way. Because back then, women didn't have a whole lot to say. They didn't have a whole lot of responsibility, but the men did. She, she could have jumped up. You know how y'all throw your hat down that you just went to church with, stomp on it. And I, go tell them yourself. And be careful. Be careful how you talk to the Lord. And simply because you can't see him doesn't say he can't hear you. And simply because you didn't say it out loud doesn't mean that he didn't pick it up on you. Jesus says unto her, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascended unto the Father. Wait, he just said, don't you touch me because I haven't touched you. I've, I've not gone to the Father. But then tell them, I have. Well, you missed the whole message. He said, by the time you get to them, I'll already be gone to the Father. Go tell them I've ascended to the Father. Tell them, don't worry about it. And he's your God, and he's my God. He's your Father, he's my Father. In other words, if I'm saved, we got a relationship. And every time I think about my stumbling and falling, I realize it's God who picks me back up over and over and over again. Have you ever been eating something and while you were eating, you got choked on it. <coughs> and you try to drink something and that won't wash it. <coughs> Be careful. Because everything I swallow is him that helps me swallow it. Every time I sit down on a chair, it's him who lets me sit upright in that chair. There are so many of us are complaining about what we don't have that you are steady trying to complain about, I ain't got no hair. Well, what, what's that on your head? My, my, and, and, and you said, well, I ain't got no hair, but you bought some. Matter of fact, you paid some good money for it. Don't shake it too hard. It might fall off. But the Lord gave you the money to get the hair. Come on with me now. And if the Lord gave you money to get the hair, then stop complaining about what you don't have. But let's say that the Lord didn't give you money to get you some hair. And you don't have nothing to tie it to. Instead of you complaining about what you don't have, be thankful you got a head that used to have some hair on it and give God the glory because he's the one that keep on blessing you. If you learn how to love God and stop loving self so much, if you learn how to bow down to him instead of wanting other people to bow down to you, he the one gave you the gift of song, so why you want other people to praise you? How about praise him that gave me the gift of song? How about praise him that gave me the car? Praise him that gave me the house. Praise him that gave me my children. Pra not me, praise him. Because he's the one word that to be praised. Now, I got, to, I got to go now. It's time. Ooh, I'm way past my time. I'm gone. But the latter part of that verse let me understand that he wanted her to understand. You need to know who I am. I'm going to the Father, but, but don't worry about it. I'll see you in the by and by. And that's what the Lord wanted me to tell y'all, that you're going to see the Lord because there's evidence. I know you thought I'd miss the message, but the evidence is he lives in your heart. He lives in your spirit. He lives in your soul. He watches over you. That's the Holy Spirit. Most of us talk about God and Jesus and leave out the third of the Godhead. His name is Holy. Are y'all knowing? 
And he's there to help guide you and to renew you and to restore you. So even if you can't sing like those two little angels right there, now those are hawks that have been flying around for a long time, and they've been singing his word. But even if you don't sound nothing but like a crow, er, just go ahead and sound. Because if you give him the praise, I promise you, he'll give you the glory. If you learn how to say thank you when you ain't got much, if you learn how to bless the food that you're eating instead of saying what you don't have. Because I got news for you. My mama taught me this one. She said, a full stomach don't know what it's full on. I wish I had some witnesses up in here. You worried about because you don't have filet mignon. I can't afford filet mignon. But I can eat a hot dog. And my stomach's still full on the hot dog. Can y'all hear me? I went to breakfast this morning and I met a young man. He came in with his daughter and I was so impressed with him. And she, she thought she owned him. Matter of fact, she did. She was four years old. And she, she said, pick me up. She, he picked her up. She was hold, he was holding her and she said, I said, she waving at me. I said, oh, glory, she waving at me. And this other lady was sitting on there. She thought I was waving her. No, baby, no, uh, huh? No, mm, you cute, but mm. so before I left there, I, I decided I know what I'm gonna do. The Lord said, "Pay for his breakfast." What? You didn't mean that, did you? I don't even know that man. He said, "I said, pay, yes, sir." And I told the waitress, bring me the ticket and sit there. I said, you got enough money? I said, don't ask. She said, why not? I said, you ain't going to like the answer. Just leave me alone. And I said, Lord, make her get up and go outside to the car. She got up and watched. Oh, 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 got that press in a hurry, didn't I? She went on out to the car. And I said, thank you, God. And when the lady came, she gave me both tickets. She said, to what? I said, this table and that table. She said, but you don't even, I said, you don't know who I know. Give me a ticket to that table. And then when I flipped my first card out, you know how you try to be slick? And I flipped that first uh, PNC bank card out there. And she came back, she said, ain't nothing on it. That's the reason I stay humble right there. Right there. I, I, I tried to play it off. Okay, give it to me. I got four more. And I handed her another one. And when I gave her that one, I said, Lord, please let there be somebody on that card. Don't, don't make me look like a fool twice. And finally, she came and said, just enough. I said, how you know? They only told you what you asked for. I, you don't know what's in my account. She said, I'm sorry. I said, no. And after I paid for it, you know how you want to gloat? And then I was getting ready to go out, and I was going to gloat about what I just done. And be careful that you bless somebody, and then you're trying to gloat over what you just did. And the Lord said, walk right past him. I said, yes, sir. And I'm walking right past him, going out. He said, I got to go. I wish he knew that I paid for that, but he don't know. Whose phone is that ringing in here? But anyway, as I'm on, it might have been Jesus called it. But as I'm walking out, I turned and I said, how you doing? He said, I'm fine, sir. How are you? I said, I'm Pastor Harris. He said, I don't go to church. I said, I know. He said, what you mean? I said, when you get ready to pay for your ticket, don't. Because I don't want them to charge you twice. I've already covered it. You don't need to know how much it was. It's done. But what I really got out of it, y'all, y'all, wait, wait, y'all missing it. What I really got out of it is when I get the glory and I'm standing at the gate, here's it. Come on. I paid for it. You, you ain't got to stand out there. Just come on in here. Because he's, he's my evidence that I believed in him. I trusted him. He's my way maker, my burden bearer. He's, he fights my battles for me. If I just learn how to keep still. I've learned that if you lean and depend on him, he'll make a way out of no way for you. Stop being selfish. Learn how to give and the Lord will bless you over and over and over. I got evidence that he's real and ain't nobody like him. You can't make me doubt him because I know too much about him.
I wonder if there's anybody else in here got some evidence that the Lord will make a way for you somehow. He'll open doors that you don't even see. I, I wish I had some witnesses in here that are not ashamed to get up on your feet and say, I've been there, done that, and got a t-shirt found it. I got evidence that he's alive forevermore. The invitation is being given, the doors are open, and I want to know if you got any evidence. Has the Lord been calling on you? Has the Lord been talking to your spirit? Have you kept saying, I, I'm coming, but I'm not ready yet? Are you waiting because you want to get some things straight before you give your life to the Lord? Wrong move. You can't straighten out your life without him in your life. So come on now, just as you are. Make it up in your mind, say, I'm not going to let another day go by that I don't trust the Lord as my way maker. Say it, baby. Is there someone here? Someone listening by internet? Someone listening live? Right where you are. You can get down on your knees and ask God to receive you unto himself. And it doesn't matter what country you live in, what state you're in, what address. doesn't matter what your past is. God can wipe the slate clean and give you a brand new state. Do I have any witnesses in here of what God can do, what God has done, what God will do? What you say, you do what? I worship you. My, my, my. Next you Sunday, we have a baptism that's going to take place here. We hope and pray that many of you will come back and share with us. Because people go to church on Resurrection Sunday, or they'll go at Christmas, or they'll go at New Year. But I believe there are more days in the year than just three. And I'm asking you, to make a commitment to the Lord. If you're not ready to give your life to him, at least hang around and listen to the lessons that you can learn and you can share. And stop judging God by other people because people will mess you up. You got to learn to serve the Lord at all times. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer.
blood I know it was the blood for me One day when I was lost He died on the cross I know it was the blood for me what you got. We got to give you another one. You know how you see I'm real. I don't play. All right. I hope and pray that you've enjoyed this day and that the message has been real about evidence. Every time I see the sunshine, that's evidence. Every time it rains, that's evidence. Every time I'm in trouble and he comes to my rescue, that's evidence. Even when I don't call on him and he show up anyhow, that's evidence. She tired. I wish I could tell you the exact date of the death of our Savior, but He blessed us. terrific what they did to him. He committed no sin, told no lie, bear no false witness. But they nailed him to a cross for you and I. They spat on him. They drove nails in his feet and in his hands. But he never said a mumbling word. Even though they pierced him in the side, he stayed right there. Didn't have to. He had all kind of power. But he stayed there anyway. Because he loved you that much. And you hadn't even been born. Your mama hadn't been born. Your grandmama hadn't been born. But he stayed there. Because if he had gotten off, then you'd have had no savior. If he had come down, we would have had no deliverer. But he took that agony to give us the right to the tree of eternal life. And because he did, all he asked is that do this in remembrance of me. Those of us who believe, let's eat together. Let's drink together. the good stuff down.
They stretched him wide. He hung his head. For me, he died. That's love. Shall we That's stand? That's love. Don't forget the coins. Don't stop singing, baby. The story that we're going to do for the children for all summer, all summer, starting today, all summer, every Sunday. We want to be a blessing to the young people of this church. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest, rule, and abide among us henceforth, now and forevermore. Let us all say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace. Don't forget your Easter egg hunt in the back of the church for all the little children. Now, little children mean four, five, and six, not you, 99.